okay. This is what we got. washer actually double facing up flat side facing down weights out of the way we have a snap ring which must be what's holding in the other end of the shaft that doesn't want to come out from there okay so I'm gonna get my snap ring pliers okay snap rings removed oh I see so now that allows me to take this whole assembly right off oh look at that a few drops of water in there guess when I was cleaning it, I might have gotten some water in there. Good thing I got this apart fairly quickly. Alright, so now we got, this is the heart of the beast. This is when the magic happens. We've got this housing right here. This very unusual shape to it. And then uh, the way this works is you've got these two rollers here. And you've got this space right here that that volume in there is going to change as this rotates not exactly sure the exact chain of events here you might kind of be able to get an idea of how this works if I rotate it and watch it I'd like to work on the shaft but I can't grab onto it and hold the camera at the same time. Anyways, kind of get the idea. And then you'll see that screw right there. That's the screw that was visible through this hole. Okay. It was visible through that hole in the housing. Right here. And that's your fuel adjustment. So, by adjusting that screw, you can change the position of this spring, this flat metal spring steel piece. And that's going to change this uh, pressure in there as this rotates. Or is it the volume that's changing? I honestly don't know. I'm no expert when it comes to fuel injection pumps. This is the first fuel injection pump I've ever had apart. 
And if this was any other fuel injection pump, a Bosch or something like that, or a modern one like on my Cummins diesel, I would never even attempt taking this apart. Um, but this one um, is notorious for done to it on the backs of pickup trucks, that kind of thing. It's a little more forgiving. If you've ever seen a facility where they do really So before I take this off and clean it up, I want to take note of the fact that there's an arrow on this side pointing to a 10383 number. And if I look at the other side of this, it does not have oh wait a minute, it does have that. Hmm, hold on a second. I gotta clean it up and see if there's anything that's gonna differentiate differentiate one side from the other. Okay, so I just took it off this way, and I'll know I noticed that the way it was on, the arrow is pointing for clockwise rotation. And if I flip it over. The arrow is pointing counterclockwise rotation. So again, I think this is to change the orientation. In other words, if you need to make this pump a counterclockwise versus clockwise pump. So I want to make sure that I realize that when I put this back together, it's got to be this way for clockwise rotation. So this assembly is going to go on top of here with the arrow pointing clockwise. And now I'm going to clean it up and inspect it. Again, I'm no expert, but looking at this, I see what's new, and it's like kind of serious Walmart. Indicating to me that this part has seen quite a bit of service. It could probably stand to be replaced. Well, I just cleaned up the surface here and etched really lightly here in the, in the uh, steel is a date and the number 605. And the date, if I look at it on the magnification, is 1-18-64. It looks like January 18, 1964 is probably the birth date of this bad boy. And that's roughly the vintage of the tractor probably. So uh, I think it's pretty safe to say this is probably the original pump. There are some other numbers on here. There's a 7-2 on that uh, metal plate that can be adjusted. And there's a 605 etched right there which makes me wonder if that indicates that this is the original um, rotating part matched to this part. Okay, the rollers, I can move those easy enough. Slide up and out. Along with these little, like, shoe-shaped deals. And make sure that see what, what those look like as far as mm, hold on a second yeah, I was looking at this really closely and realized that there's a uh, a little like shoe that holds that roller it actually has a uh, shape to it Let's see if I can show you one roller out there you go see how it's got a skew to it and that one went in just like this so if I put this back in you'll see it's almost got like a ramp it's got a downhill it's got a slope to, to, to it so looking from on this bottom one, with it on the bottom, from left to right, it's high on this side and low on this side. If I look at it from the side, you can see that. So, I definitely want to make sure I put those in the right way. Because I'd be willing to bet I could flip it around this way and have it go in. And then actually, it doesn't change. Yeah, that's true. Why would it? doesn't matter which way I put it in, it 
go ahead and change that. Okay. Okay. Let's get confused for a second there. Everybody relax. Calm down. Let's see. What happened if you took this one out of this side? Again, same thing with this side. You know, this orientation here. This is the high side. It goes downhill towards the slow side. Or like that. And if I put this in the wrong side, it doesn't change. Okay. I want to make sure they're 100% interchangeable before I uh, take them out to get out of the room. <laughs> Now with the rollers out of the way, you've got two tiny little pistons in here. So, easiest way to get those out, I can just take something and gently slide them out the other side. Now I'm going to take a good look at those and make sure that those are... It's symmetrical, so it's not going to make a difference which way those go in. Again, all these tiny particles of junk that I'm getting on them is not a good idea at all. These should immediately go into a bath of clean diesel fuel to keep them sparkling clean. Okay, so now that's cleaned out. I turned it back over with the transfer pump side facing up and realized now there's a screw right down the middle of this and that's what's keeping this together because this does not want to, this cannot fit through there that way. It has to come out this way and it can't come out this way because it's attached to this assembly. So what I need to do is get that screw out down in there. That screw is tight. I can't just hold on to this with my gloved hand and get that out. The question is how to hold this without damaging it. If I weren't worried about damaging the surface I would stick a screwdriver shaft right through that hole but I know that's a bad idea. But I'm noticing there are flats right on this part right here. And I'm betting that there, there's a exact dimension to that that fits a wrench. Seven eighths is a perfect fit. Yep, that did the trick. So I'll put the camera down and finish on screw. Oh, I was wrong. That's a little plug that holds in a little spring-loaded piston. Very carefully inverted it, and this is what fell out. This little piece in the spring. 